From the heartland of America to every nation on Earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empe Presents. It is very difficult for me sometimes to give you some of the headlines if we didn't have a good news message for you at the end of the program. So don't tune us off. Stay tuned for good news at the end. First of all, fatal mass shootings rock U.S. again. Oh my, my heart has been so moved with all of the mass shootings out there. We're going to be discussing that in just a moment. And then, EU, the European Union, divided. The migrant crisis tests the limits of EU cooperation. In other words, um, you know, some are saying, hey, we got too many, you got to take some. No, we don't want any more. We can't take any more. They're having quite an argument over there in the EU over who will take more of the of the migrants. Then this one. Hamas says, all Israel will be ours. Oh my, and at the end of the program we will discuss that. It is so very, very important. Now, it is so great to have Jack on the program back again. He's done two programs for us since his illness. And World Net Daily has done a phenomenal job of giving us a, a wonderful a web page that you can get. That's WND.com. That's their web page. It's all about his illness. Evangelist Jack Van be back from Brink of Death. And you know, Jack, so many people have written, they said, thank the Lord that God brought him back. The Lord has more for you to do before he comes back again. Rexella, I lay there for 42 days at Beaumont Hospital, unable to say a word. I was out. I was like a zombie. I didn't know anything. I didn't know my name. I couldn't communicate with anybody, 42 days. Then I went to a second place. And I went another 35 days, hardly without being able to speak word. I didn't even know my name. And it was only when I got to the place there on Woodward yeah, Avenue. Woodward, yes, Woodward Hills. Yeah, that I started coming back. When I first started walking, I could only make five feet with one of the carrier carts. But before I got through, I did 100 feet over there. Then I got to the Beaumont Center when I got home, and I've done 870 feet yeah. with the walker and 925 feet just last Monday with a cane. I'm back. But I was having a hard time recalling any of my Bible verses, and I had memorized 18,000 in these 67 years that I've been a minister. I've been ordained 70 years when we hit 2017. 2,800,000 have come to Christ. Could I quit? I couldn't think. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit came on me, and everything started clicking in the last two weeks, plus all the love I got from the sweetest little girl who ever lived, Rexella May Shelton, who became Rexella <laughs> Van Impey. Oh, husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself for the church. And I love you like that, and that's Ephesians 5.25. You guys, I hope you have a little bit of what I have here through this precious little girl. But I said all that to say this. I started 10 days ago, and the Holy Spirit started giving me all these verses. You're going to hear them, not this week, but the next week. And I'm going to take on the Muslim faith. They have put this billboard up here at our local airport, and they're starting to put them up across America. I'm going to fight this damnable thing. Why? Because they've got a picture of the Quran and the Bible, and they said, we both teach the same Jesus. That's a lie. They have what is called takia. And when you use that word, it means that you can lie, you can deceive, as long as you are promoting Islam. Now, I don't want to burn any of their books. 
I don't want to say anything unkind about their leaders, but when you take my Jesus and make him rotten, he is no longer the Son of God, and if you believe it, you'll burn in hell forevermore. He did not die on a cross. He did not resurrect from a grave. He became a Muslim since he left. He comes back and preaches to turn to Allah, it's convert or die. And he, Jesus, puts to death every Jew, Christian, Hindu, and Buddhist. Mm, Jack, so I want to encourage everybody to stay tuned for next week. It is going to be dynamite, believe me. Well, you know, friends, in traveling into 50 countries, when I would land at our airport, I always felt so safe, so very, very safe. But I want to ask you something. Are things changing here in the United States? I'm going to leave that question to you, and you can answer it. With this first picture I want you to see, it kind of started uh, dynamite with the 9-11 architect. And of course, that's Khalid Sheikh Mohammed. And he's the one who designed the blowing up there in New York, the mastermind behind it. And here you see him. There he is, the Khalid Sheikh Mohammed. And you know, Jack, to me, that sort of, uh, whoo, revolutionized my thinking when we come back from a foreign country. My, oh, my, is something like that going to happen again? But it, it is happening, not in such a massive form, but it is happening, all the shootings and everything. Well, here. just now in Turkey, they said, we just had a 9-11 like you did. But this is the guy, the mastermind behind it. Yes. And he said, oh, it was hilarious because the 19 men that I chose uh, to fly those jets into the Twin Towers, I told them they'd see the Virgin 72 apiece and they're two and a half million waiting. And listen to what the Quran says about them. God forgive us. A reward from your Lord Allah youthful, full-breasted maidens, voluptuous women of equal age, fair women with beautiful, big, and lustrous eyes. And that is Surah 4454. I'm telling you, you guys with your virgins on the other side are going to make heaven like hell on earth. You don't kill people and get virgins and for all eternity, to feed your lusts. My Bible says when you start fooling around with virgins and you cheat on your wife and you do all these things, you don't even see the inside of heaven. Hebrews 13 verse 4 says marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled in marriage but outside of marriage, adulterers and fornicators, God will judge where in a place called hell where there'll be no virgins waiting for you. The mastermind behind us said, oh, I got a kick out of these guys because the night before they were expecting to be with the 72 virgins, so they got all kinds of perfume and sprinkled it on their clothes. I bet they're wondering in hell right now what happened. Now, is that what the Bible teaches? 1 Corinthians 6, verses 9 to 11. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not, shall not, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers shall inherit the kingdom of God. You're going to be lost. Who said so? The Lord Jesus Christ. He wasn't a namby-pamby preacher who was afraid he would offend someone and lose a little financial support. He said it like it is, and some of you preachers won't open your mouth for anything. Now let's see what the Word of God has to say. This is Jesus speaking, and in Matthew 23, 15, he says, Woe unto you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites, for you compass travel land and sea to make one convert. And when he's made you, make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. Listen to him in verse 33. You bunch of snakes, how shall you escape the damnation of hell? And I'm telling you, it's going to be hot for you guys, and you won't enjoy any virgins in the place where you're going because 
they won't be there and they won't be in heaven either. You can't get away with sin. God won't allow it. All right, Jack, we're going to go on to something. Remember I said, uh, has America changed? Oh, my, oh, my. You know, with the fatal shootings that we have been seeing around the United States, it just moves my heart, doesn't it, you? Take a look. Fatal mass shooting rocks U.S. again. And where's that? Attack in Oregon is the fourth shooting in American campus, college campus since August. Ten people were killed by a 26-year-old gunman. And then, whoa, would new gun laws stop mass shootings? We know our president's sort of pushing that. Will it really? Newsweek. All right, God, guns, and ganja. All right, I just want to say that the Bible does address this about having uh, defensive weapons, not for aggression, to go out and rob somebody or hurt somebody, but for defensive measures. Does the Bible teach that we should have defensive measures, Jack? Rexella, right now among our clergy, they want to do away with capital punishment. What's wrong with you eggheads? Why don't you get into your Bibles? My Bible says in Exodus 20, verse 13, thou shalt not kill. Yeah, but that's capital punishment. No, it isn't. Turn the page. 21, 12. He that smites a man, death, shall surely be put to death. Leviticus 24, 17. He that kills a man shall be put to death. No ifs, ands, or buts. And Jesus taught self-defense. I'm sorry, Obama, you don't know the Bible either. You're like our ministers. You've gone to Jeremiah's church, and he didn't know his Bible very well. He just said one of the most stupid things I read in the paper this week. I'm not even going to take time for it. But listen to me right now. The Bible makes it very clear what Jesus taught in Luke 22, 36. He said, if you don't have a sword, that's what they had in his day, sell your clothes and buy one. I am with the National Rifles Association. I'm all for you guys. If we had more guns, there wouldn't be so many killings in all our colleges. Mm -hmm. For defense. We need yes. to defend ourselves. Now, when Jesus saw somebody that had a need, what did he do? He helped them. He healed those who were sick, and he fed those who were hungry. Oh, we do need to be helping the migrants. But do we have a concern? Take a look, please, at this. Is there a danger? Ah, little girl on her daddy's neck coming over. The migrants, and here you see it again, the migrant crisis tests the limits of EU cooperation. We can only take so many, that's what they're saying. EU begs for Turkey's help. Going on, UK, Islamists rally for Sharia Britain. Now, when they come in, oh my, what do they try to do? Change the law. They want Sharia law. French official, 10,000 Europeans in jihad soon. Now, you know, 10,000 Europeans have joined the jihadist movement, and that is in Syria and Iraq and so forth, and going on here, secret planting of up, whoa, to 75,000 Syrian Muslims begins in the United States. Now, the beginning is 10,000 coming in, and then they're going to get surge up to about 75,000. What will that mean? Already in North Dakota, Kentucky, North Carolina, Ohio, and Washington, influxes are coming in. ISIS plans on killing hundreds of millions in religious cleansing. Now, that's a report from a German reporter who was in Mosul, Iraq. And he said that when they come in, how do they accomplish this cleansing? By changing the law. Instead of the law of the land, uh, they change it to Sharia law. Now, Sharia law, friends, altogether different than the laws that we have. Jack, Sharia law is completely different than our laws. Here it is, four points. First of all, you kill your daughter if she has premarital sex. Secondly, you kill all homosexuals. Thirdly, you kill all apostates, your own, if they say one word against the Quran. And fourthly, they kill Christians. They've done that to three million already. I have the headlines to prove it. Now, 
This is what they're doing when they take over. That's why Carson, that great black doctor, is right when he says we should not have a Muslim president. They kill him? Listen to this report from Britain. Now I'm going to show you why Dr. Carson knows more than some of you blockheads who write these dirty, filthy magazines putting him down. This is from the Archbishop of Canterbury, Rowan Williams, and he told a BBC radio interviewer that the United Kingdom needs to face up to the fact that some of its citizens, that's British Muslims, do not relate to the British legal system. Therefore, the British legal system needed to, at some point, adopt parts of Islamic Sharia law, a legal code based on the Quran, the sayings of Muhammad, and centuries of tradition. Now get ready for a shock. It has now emerged that Sharia courts with these powers have been set up in London, Birmingham, Bradford, Manchester with a network headquarters in New Eaton, Wickenshire. Two more courts are being planned for Glasgow and Edinburgh. And when they take over, they take over. Even the Sharia police are marching the streets of Germany and arresting people. They have it in Belgium and France and Denmark, and they're going to have it in America. They tell us that 60 million are going to come from all of these Muslim countries and many of them in the United States of America. And among them are jihadists and ISIS murderers. God help America. Oh, yes. God help America. Well, not only, friends, uh, are the EU and the United States being targeted to, as a takeover, but so is Israel. They hate Israel. I'm going to go back about 300 years and quote somebody from London, England. He targeted this and opened our eyes uh, many, many years ago to this. Bishop Louth of London, England, proclaimed the message of Ezekiel, chapters 38 and 39, 300 years ago, 1713. The prophecy without question relates to the latter ages of the world when Israel shall return to their own land. Well, they have. Rosh signifies those inhabitants of uh, Cynthia. From hence the Russians derive their name. This formidable invasion of the land of Israel, God will defeat. The Persians, Iran, Iraq, and Afghanistan from the east, the Ethiopians from the south, and the Moors, Libyans from the west, will join with Rosh, which is Russia, in this invasion. Now, who's going to join with Russia? Beijing. China will stand with Moscow. Hamas. All of Israel is ours. There you see it. And here's somebody. Oh, we're holding our heads because all they want to do, Khomeini, the dark obsession with the Jews and Israel, he keeps talking about it. And Ahmadinejad, Iran is determined to eradicate Israel. And then, well, unleashing a nuclear race that could certainly be what happened when we signed the nuke deal. Khomeini calls death to America as Kerry Hale's progress on the nuke deal. Well, we've signed it. And you know, friends, I know that you recognize they're all joining together now. Syria, Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan, and now Russia. Who's she helping? Syria. And that's one of the ones that will invade Israel, and then China will join with him. Jack, you've been preaching this forever. 1947, I got into the ministry, and I got a book by Dr. L. Sale Harrison on the great Northern Confederacy, how Russia was going to lead Armageddon, Revelation 16, 16, as based on Ezekiel 38, 39. And I thought I was the only one who ever taught it. 300 years ago, the Bishop Lowthy of England preach the same message that I've been preaching. And it's Ezekiel 38 and 39, verses 1 and 2, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set your face against Gog, the land of Magog, the Russian prince of Moscow and Tobolsk. That is the translation in modern English today. Rosh is Russia in the Greek and Russia in English. It's the war of the latter years and the latter days, Ezekiel chapter 38, verses 8 and 16. And guess what? Russia's making the move now in the very nations. <clears throat> the Bible says it will happen. The bishop had it right. Persia is Ezekiel 38.5. They changed their name from Persia to Iran in 1932. Syria is Isaiah 17.1. In some... Chapter 83, verses 5 to 7, we have many more of these nations that this great British 
leader mentioned. It's all here, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be the bloodiest battle in history. And guess what? It's going to take place at Israel. Ezekiel 38, verses 8, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, chapter 39, verses 2, 4, twice in 7, 9, 11, 12, 17, 22, 23, 25, and 29. 18 times the battleground is Israel, and they're fighting to get Jerusalem back from Israel. Now, here is why you better prepare to meet God. You Christians will say it'll be another thousand years. Come on, get into your Bibles. Jesus said, I'm going to tell you when it's going to happen. Matthew 24, 32, learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and put forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh. So when you shall see all the signs of Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 17, and 21, all of them in connection with Israel being a nation, Matthew 24, 32, go back to it again, and in control of Jerusalem, that's it. Then everything will be fulfilled. It wasn't fulfilled in 1713 when Bishop Lally was preaching on it. Right, right. It's only been fulfilled since 1948. They now are the nation of Israel, and they control Jerusalem. This is it, folks. We're there. If any of you, how can you be so dogmatic? I heard a Christian the other day say it could be another thousand years. You don't know your Bible. Why? The Bible says in Matthew 24, 32, that when the fig tree is blossoming, has become a nation, and their control of Jerusalem, Joel 3, verse 2, that's when Armageddon takes place. What? Yes. Are you listening, ladies and gentlemen? Israel is the fig tree. Joel 1, 7, Hosea 9, 10. And they've been in charge since 1948, and in control of Jerusalem since 1967. All the signs had to be fulfilled in relationship to these two. We're the first generation in 2,000 years to see it. Are you ready? Here it is, Revelation 9, 14, 18. Loose the four demons in the great river Euphrates to slay a third part of mankind. By these three was the third part of mankind killed fire, smoke, brimstone through an army of 200 million. It's going to be the most devastating thing in history, and it's atomic. Let me say it again. Why? By these three was the third part of men kill fire, smoke, brimstone. Brimstone. Prepare to meet your God. Oh, absolutely, Jack. I love that. Prepare to meet your God. Armageddon is going to be a terrible time. But it's so wonderful to know that whenever the Lord comes, or if he should call me home tomorrow, he could. My niece was taken home to be with the Lord unexpectedly in an automobile accident. Kim, how wonderful she's with the Lord. We need to be ready any time. Are you ready? We can be forgiven of anything in the life. If only you'll open your heart to the Savior. Will you pray this prayer with Jack? Ask Jesus to be your Savior, Jack. If you pray this prayer, I can make you a promise. You will escape Armageddon, the bloodiest war in history. I'll keep you from the hour of testing that comes on the whole world, Revelation 3.10, the great escape. Pray it, Lord Jesus. I believe we are at the final moments and you've called Brother Jack back from a deathbed to warn us. I want you today, Jesus. I want to accept what you did for me on that cross as you shed that precious holy blood to wash away every stain of sin I've ever committed. I lay them all on you now, Jesus. Cleanse me, forgive me, save me. I pray it in your holy name. Amen. Oh, Jack, amen. Thank you for that great message today. And if you prayed that prayer, write to me. There's my address. I'll send you this little book of first steps in a new direction. You can have a new life right now, walking with the Lord, if only you opened your heart to him. I trust that you did. He'll take away everything you don't want there. I don't care if it's drugs or alcohol or what it is. You've been forgiven. 
having Jesus in your heart. And now our wonderful offer of the week, The Great Escape. Jack was just talking about it. Can you avoid all the stuff that's going to happen here, The Great Escape? Take a look, please, at the commercial. Dr. Van Epi, during his recent bout with death, spent every waking moment praying for a message from his past that could help his faithful followers and partners more than any work ever prepared during his lengthy years of ministry. In the light of Christ's imminent return, he studied slowly and searchingly for God's guidance. Then it hit him, and he restudied The Great Escape. 35 reasons no genuine believer would be upon earth for Armageddon or Earth's horrendous judgments that fall over a seven-year period. Why not? Every true child of God will be raptured, caught away in the twinkling of an eye into the loving arms of Jesus. Soon believers will hear the shout, come up hither. Then in 11 one hundredths of a second, all God's children are swept through billions and even trillions of miles of space, the dead and the living, to see the face of Jesus and to be totally protected in his loving arms eternally. Thy kingdom come is not just a meaningless phrase. It's the setting up of Christ's kingdom, the transference of heaven to earth forever and forever. Get the glorious 35 reason study on the great escape. As soon as you receive it, your heart will be assured that you will soon be with Jesus in safety for the millions of years to come. Woo, there's my address. Make the call and there's a telephone number 35 reasons we won't be here how wonderful i'm going to give you a gift to jack's book on the great escape here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive it chuck thank you rexella my friend to order the great escape have your credit card ready and call toll free 24 hours a day 1-800-JBI-7777 to order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Appy Ministries, Box 704, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Appy Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NIA6Y1. Now back to Rex Eller. Oh, thank you so very much, Chuck. The 800 number in the RC address. Please make the call. You really need to have comfort in a, a troubling world. You'll receive that when you watch this wonderful video. And my gift with your order, Jack's wonderful book, The Great Escape. So make the call right away. Oh, so many people have so many burdens. I really love this closing statement. To ease another's burden, help to carry it. How very true. We need to put our arms around those in need. Looking forward to being in your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye.